Have you ever wondered how all of your pre-supported models from your favorite designers were prepared? Well, more than likely, they were using Lychee Slicer to do it. And placing those supports can be an art form in itself, and Lychee Slicer is now making this easier than ever with their new auto support functionality. This new way of auto supporting your resin 3D prints allows you to create some really amazing preset options combining small, medium, and heavy supports all in one action. So let me guide you through this latest update from Lychee Slicer that's not only gonna enable you to auto support smaller models, but also some much bigger ones. Also make sure you stick around for more details about the giveaway that I'm doing along with the Lychee Slicer team. And before we jump into the new auto supports, just a quick refresher for anybody that's new to Lychee Slicer on what this slicer is all about. So here inside of Lychee Slicer, the main thing here is you're gonna be able to bring in different three files that you can get them supported, hollowed out, and ready to be printed. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is bring in a 3D printer. They have the ability to not only work with resin 3D printers, but also FDM 3D printers. That is a little known fact for some of you out there that might not be aware of that. But here, I wanna specifically add in a new 3D printer. I'm gonna come in here and select resin, and then under Elegoo, I'm gonna select my Mars 5 Ultra and bring that in. One cool thing with Lychee Slicer is that they have a resin library of slicer settings that you can actually create and share with other users. So here I can come in and I know I'm gonna be using an Elegoo and their rapid high speed resin and I can see multiple profiles that have already been created by other users and shared. So here's one that looks good and I can add that in and start working with this. And as expected inside this slicer, you're gonna find all of the basic functions of arranging and orienting your 3D model however you need to have it placed in order to get this properly hollowed out and supported. One additional cool thing that I'm loving that Lychee team has added here is the ability to work with multiple build plates, which will come in really handy with large 3D models that contain multiple parts. But one thing that's packed into Lychee Slicer that sets itself apart from like basically every other slicer that's out there is Lychee Library. This contains a huge assortment of 3D files that have been all validated and checked before given access to you that you can run and 3D print, or some of these are even in some cases auto supported and ready just to get sliced and 3D printed. And there is over 100 different designers supplying 3D files here to the Lychee library, and they're continually being updated every month. And one really cool thing is for the designers that are out there, this all helps contain and keep all of your 3D files secured within the library. Users aren't able to download and share these 3D files outside of the slicer. And for users, this means that you don't actually have to manage and download all these 3D files and keep them on stored on your computer and trying to find them when you wanna 3D print them. They're all visually stored in this online library. And as an example, I'm gonna pull up one of these files from Black Forge Games here. I'm gonna pull up this 75 millimeter scale miniature, and I'm gonna import this directly into the slicer so that we can take a look at this. This is again, gonna be a pre-supported file that they've provided that I can just get sliced and sent off to my 3D printer. And with a little creative arranging for all the parts for this model, I was actually able to fit all the parts on one single build plate for my Elegoo Mars 3D printer. And and along the top of the navigation is where we're gonna see the next step, which is the prepare menu, where you could come in here and run your supports. But since this is an already pre-supported file, I can skip over this for now. Then I can go directly to the export function and get this file sliced and up and printing. And since all of these files were pre-supported using Lychee Slicer, I can pretty much guarantee that everything's gonna print smoothly here on my 3D printer. And as expected, the print results look incredible here for this miniature. But what if you had a model that wasn't pre-supported or you wanted to add your own set of supports? Well, I'm gonna go back into the prepare menu and then here is where I can have access to all the support settings, but I'm gonna go in and delete all of the supports that were pre-set up on these models. Now, if I come under the auto support section down below, there is a new plus section where there are pre-support templates that have been built for you to start utilizing. So I'm gonna go in this selection menu and select the 75 millimeter option and click auto generate supports. Not only is this incredibly easy, but the Lychee team is working on building out these profiles so that you'll have a variety to access for whatever you're trying to 3D print. Then after about 30 seconds, all of my parts are auto-generated with these new supports and 
ready for me to get printed. And again, to auto support this, I clicked one button and then went and got it printed and the results look incredible. The supports were also a breeze to remove. And once assembled and standing next to the pre-supported model, I can't tell the difference between the two models. Unless I put the label up here, I don't think you could either. This is how good those auto supports work. Again, one click, 30 seconds later, and I was able to get this up and print it. Even if we do a side-by-side -side comparison directly in the slicer of the pre-supported files versus the one that we've auto-supported, it's hard to tell which is which. That's how good these new auto-supports are. And clearly, Lychee's auto support presets work great for supporting your miniatures or small statues, but what about large items? A great example would be this mask from Black Forge Games that I'm gonna get loaded into the slicer. And once you come over into the prepare tab, this is where you can start applying your supports under the support section. This is where we're gonna see all of our traditional support options that you're typically dealing with if you wanted to manually support or even run the auto support function. Now there is the classic and the new plus function that allows us to utilize presets that we can then generate our supports from. So I've created a cosplay supports preset. And you'll see here that there's one that Derek from the Lychee team has set up for your smaller miniatures, as well as your larger scale miniatures or statues that you might be working with. However, on my end of things, I'm always looking to print some larger, beefier supports for my actual cosplay props. So I've taken some of Derek's settings and tweaked those ever so slightly to create my own prop small, prop medium, and prop large set of presets for these supports, which I can then combine together into this cosplay supports auto support functionality. This will all make sense, I promise, once we get into it here. Uh, you can actually come in and under these cosplay supports or any of these supports, you can either create your own or modify, duplicate, and reuse some of these. And yes, I will be sharing these all with the Lychee team so that you'll have direct access to the supports that I've created and that I'm printing with. So if we come into the edit function, this is where the magic, so to speak, happens. They've created a very visual breakdown of all of these auto support settings. And the first thing that we're brought into is the global settings. And you'll notice here that there's a visual coinciding with a lot of the values that we're going to be seeing throughout these particular tabs. We also have the ability to control whether things are on or off when you're auto generating these supports. So for me, I'm gonna leave auto bracing on, that's gonna generate those little cross supports when we auto generate our supports. Path to ground dictates how far out it's gonna reach out from the model to try and hit the ground when placing its supports. So I'm gonna leave this at about 40 here for mine. Now, this is a little controversial for this one here is mini supports. Some people love mini supports, which are those little hair thin supports. I'm not a big fan of those, and I'm printing big cosplay items. I don't want those. I'm, I'm pretty much trying to stick to just the basic supports here. So I'm gonna disable those for my settings. You can always enable them if you want to. You can then choose which type of raft that you also would like to have auto-generated with these supports. So I'm gonna stick with the line triangles, how far you'd like your model lifted up as part of the auto support process. And again, since these are larger props, I like to have mine lifted ever so slightly higher than the default five millimeters. Then looking at the next tab is where we're gonna dictate which of the presets from our supports we're going to be utilizing for each of the steps. So when it comes to finding the islands, then I'm going to choose for small layers, medium layers, and large layers. I'm going to be utilizing the prop small, medium, and large settings that I've already set up. But you'll see here that if I wanted to reuse some of the ones that Derek has set up, or if I wanted to import others that other people have created, I'd have access to those here in this drop-down selections. And this is where the real magic occurs because we're mixing and matching. We're not just choosing one type of supports and auto-generating. We're doing a cross section across small, medium, and large. And the other tabs get a good bit more technical and Derek has done a great job breaking down each of these sections in detail in another video that I'll have linked down below where you can go through and check out all of that in greater detail. 
Now, to me, one of the most important settings comes under the overhang section. This is gonna dictate how much of an overhang is it gonna account for when it's auto-generating your supports. So the higher the number, the fewer amount of supports are gonna be generated or just accounting for with its overhang. So I'm actually accounting for a larger overhang since these are rather large objects that I'm printing and fingers crossed so far have worked really well working with 60%, but you can always slightly adjust these as needed. Now, if all of that felt a little overwhelming, the beauty of this is that Lychee is gonna be creating and sharing these support profiles with you, the users, so that you don't necessarily have to go in here and build all these from scratch. You can go through and tweak them as needed for the models that you're printing. And for this large model, it took about a minute for all these supports to auto generate. And then I can come in here and further fine tune these. So if I wanted to come in and remove any of these, I can select a support and delete it. Or if I wanted to adjust the placement of those, I could. I can also come in and start manually adding supports where I feel like some additional supports might be needed. However, one really cool thing that the Lychee team have added here is you'll notice here, if I swap this around back to the front of this model, there is support selection visibility down at the bottom here. So I can start toggling things on and off throughout this. So if I wanna just specifically look at my supports that are the stabilization supports, I can look at those. Or if I wanted to just specifically look at overhangs, I can look at those or reinforcements, I can look at those, or islands, I can also look at those. But what's really fun about this is for each one of these sections here, so if I wanted to look at islands and any existing islands that we have, I can see that there are eight unsupported points for this. And I can click show, and it's gonna flip this around and start showing me where these particular contacts are. So here I can see that it's highlighted an island that is unsupported that I can now come in and start manually adding some extra supports to help support this. And you can basically go point by point and identify whether or not you want to add those extra supports to those areas of the model that it's identified. I find this to be super helpful and a really easy way to just visually walk you through the areas of your model that might need some extra supports. Now, one other feature that they've got packed in here that I don't really think any other slicer has in it is that you can run multiple different sets of auto supports on one particular model. And let me show you an example of where this might come in handy. So here, this is actually a base part for the stand for this mask, and it has a flat bottom. Think of your miniatures. You might have a really flat bottom for the base of your miniatures that you wanna have supported versus some of the other areas that might extend beyond the actual part of the base. So what you can do here is come under the manual function, click on start support projection, and then I can highlight highlight the areas of the model that I would actually like to have supports auto-generated against before I go through the process of actually running my full auto support function. So here I can come in and say preview and I'm gonna say, sure, let's add the supports based on the settings that are in there. Again, these are all things that you can easily play around with, run, rerun, remove, all over again until you get it in a place that you'd like. So here are some basic supports that it's added to this. And now if I come back onto the auto support section, I can now say generate automatic supports and I can now choose whether or not I want it to delete the supports that I've either manually added or here have run using the auto, a different auto support function, or maybe there was already existing supports on this model and I'd like to just add additional supports on top of that. So I'm gonna choose key and it's gonna rerun the process and adding additional supports to support the other areas that might need some additional support. And by no means am I an expert when it comes to supporting resin 3D prints. I typically just hit the auto support function and hope for the best. But this almost guarantees that I'm gonna see a better result with my 3D prints thanks to this combined option of your auto supports. But once you have everything prepped and supported, it's then time to come over and get this all exported and 3D printed. Also, one last thing that I know everybody and their mother is aware, Lychee already has this in their slicer, but nobody else does, and I still don't understand why no other slicer has this, but it's the ability to show a preview of your model before 
before you actually get it printed at scale compared to other objects. So here I can see this face max compared to a banana for scale, which makes sense, or a can of cola to give me a better accurate representation of just exactly how large is this object gonna print. And speaking of, let's get all these parts printed and check out the results of all of our auto supports. And let's take a closer look here at the supports where it generated so nicely with the combination of the light, medium, and heavy. As expected, it's gonna place some heavier supports in the lower contact areas where it's gonna need some more bracing and the lighter supports where it's gonna just help you basically keep everything supported and printing properly. And it turned out ridiculously good. I was a little nervous about the teeth because not all the teeth are there on purpose, but everything's supported and printed according to plan. And all these prints turned out so good utilizing this new auto support system. Again, if I can figure this out, you easily can as well. And the best part is I'm gonna be sharing all of the support settings that I generated so that if you're printing really big things like replica props, you'll be able to utilize these support settings as a starting point that you can then further tweak and refine. And between all the pre-supported models on Lychee Library and this new auto support function, it really does feel like Lychee support is taking a big step forward in making things easier and more accessible when it comes to resin 3D printing. And speaking of, Lychee is actually giving away a six month subscription to Lychee Library, which you'll find a link to the giveaway and all the details down below. And if you're interested in trying out some of these new features for yourself and printing some amazing things, you can get 10% off Lychee's annual plans with the code LYCHEEUJ10. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content just like this one here on the interwebs. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon, you'll find links to those down below. But let me know what you think in the comments down below about Lychee's newest update with these auto supports. And keep in mind, they're continually updating their app with feedback based on you, the user. So make sure to let them know what you're interested in seeing. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye.